So one of the things I've learned about machine learning is that it's extraordinarily simple. I know you don't believe me, but it's actually true. People have a tendency to put AI and machine learning on a, on a bit of a pedestal. But at its most fundamental level, machine learning just does something that computers are very good at. And that's recognizing patterns in complex high dimensionality data. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll do a, a few sketches and hopefully it, it makes a point. Um, but I would also recommend reading uh, an article on Hacker Noon by uh, Cassie Kozyakov. Um And it's machine learning is the emperor wearing clothes. Strongly recommend having a look at it, but let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so I'm going to start by explaining one of the most basic machine learning models, linear regression. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the relationship between a child's height and the father's height, because we do know there's some sort of correlation there. Okay, so let's add father's height on the x-axis. Okay, so if we just plot uh, relevant information that we know, so here we go, just plugging in a few data points and just to remind you that this is in two-dimensional space that we're, we're plotting everything in. And now that we've got those data points plotted, we'll just put in the uh, regression line. And... Uh, hmm, okay, I don't think that looks quite right. Let's put another one. Okay, that one's maybe a bit better. Please try to ignore the first one. So we know that there's some sort of correlation and what we're looking at is to fit the line of best fit through all the data points and look at the error rate. This is the formula by which we can calculate uh, child's height using the father's height and the regression or, and the error rate. What if we want to plot in more dimensions? Say we have another bit of information, maybe the mother's um, height as well. That's right, that in. Okay, so we can imagine that in three-dimensional space. But what if we get to more dimensions, say four, five, six? Then things start getting more complicated, and this is when computers really start to come into their own. They become a lot, things become a lot more complex and a lot more interesting, and where machine learning really comes to the fore. Okay, so now it's time to look at another really common model, K nearest neighbor. And what I'm going to do is just, okay, so K nearest neighbor is often re rated KNN. Um, and what I'm just going to do is just plot that XY graph again. And then I will plot some data points from two different classes. And the way that K nearest neighbor works is that when we have a new point, we count the nearest number of data points to that new point to look at what we think is the most likely result. So, okay, and if we plot our new data point in green, and we look at, say, k equals 3 to start. So we're looking at the three nearest neighbors. Now, if we just count them, OK, we can see that this shade of orange, sorry, this red, almost like one. But if we look at a different number of k of nearest neighbors, let's look at, uh, say, 5 this time. Of a dodgy circle. And you can see that again, 
we get sorry the, we can see that we get this sort of orange color however if we go back and look at say an even bigger number k equals 11 and get that original red color as our data point again. And that's just how k nearest neighbor works. So now just to look at uh, another one that I'm sure you'll recognize, um, decision trees. So decision trees are used widely in lots of industries and um, some of you should be fairly familiar with. And they're a relatively basic principle. You just make a, a decision based on the data and uh, essentially create a flowchart. So all we're going to do today is decide whether we want to um, play tennis. And so the question here is, is it raining? Yes or no? And if it's raining, I'll be honest, I don't really like going outside when it's wet, so I'm not going to play. And uh, But if it's not raining, go down to another decision. And is it hot? And again, I don't really like getting hot and sweaty, um, so I'm not going to play if it's too hot. And <clears throat> However, if it's not hot, next, is it too humid? And like I've already said, I don't really want to get hot and sweaty. So if it's humid, I'm not playing. But if it isn't too humid, I'll play. So that is just basically how they work. It's just a series of decisions. And it's, like I say, it's very sort of simply explained. Now to explain one of my personal areas of interest, natural language processing, which is where we essentially convert um, words into numeric representations to allow us to plot, plot them on that x y graph in in vector space so one of the most common um methods of doing this is using a library called word to vec one of the most famous examples of plotting words on in this vector space is plotting the two words king and queen now we have a vector for king that we can plot on uh, on our graph but interestingly if we subtract the vector for king oh sorry for the vector for man from king and add the vector of woman to that vector we get the vector for queen and what this hints at is some intrinsic value of that remaining vector that is linked to royalty and contains that meaning that is embedded into words. So I hope this has demonstrated that what machine learning is all about at its core is pattern recognition. It's about seeing patterns in data. And it's as simple as that.